If you do this exercise for shadow work, all your dreams and desires will automatically start fulfilling themselves on a speedrun. Ever feel like you're constantly playing whack-a-mole with negativity? Crushed by self-doubt one minute, then exploding with anger the next? Yeah, me too. Here's the thing. That negativity, in some random monster, it's your shadow self, whispering lies and holding you back from your dreams. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to remove self-doubt and dive DEP into shadow work so that all your manifestations get fast forwarded. The thing is, when you do the necessary inner work, you lay a good foundation for your dreams to take flight. Manifesting becomes the easiest thing in the world. Life will never feel the same. Dull way again after this video. We all have a shadow. Those hidden parts we shove down. Insecurities. Fears. The things we think make us unlovable. But guess what? Ignoring it just gives them power. They become the puppeteer, yanking your strings and sabotaging your happiness. Shadow work isn't about becoming some dark and brooding character. It's about saying, Hey, shadow self, I see you. Let's talk. Shadow work is your key to unlocking the best version of yourself. So let's dive into it without further ado. Remember to subscribe for more such cool videos. Carl Jung and the Shadow Carl Jung, a pioneering psychologist, proposed that everyone has a shadow side of their personality. This shadow contains the less desirable aspects of ourselves, like the Mr. Hyde to our Dr. Jekyll. It exists unconsciously and holds traits and behaviors we learn to repress due to societal or parental disapproval. The formation of the shadow during childhood when we're most vulnerable and reliant on caregivers, we repress parts of ourselves. This happens gradually and unconsciously as we learn to avoid shame. We lock these repressed traits away, but the shadow still influences our decisions and behaviors, often without our awareness. Unconscious shadow, the root of unexplained reactions. We may experience strong emotional reactions without understanding why. For instance, Someone who represses smugness might react with hostility towards someone who expresses that trait. This is because we can't acknowledge our own shadow. So, we project it onto others, disliking them for what we dislike in ourselves. Shadow work, embracing wholeness, to become whole and truly know ourselves. We must explore the repressed aspects of our psyche. Shadow work is this process of uncovering and accepting these hidden traits. It can be challenging and shatter our self-image, but it's crucial for personal growth. The goal of shadow work, integration, not elimination. The goal, in to destroy the shadow, but to integrate it. We need to acknowledge these traits as part of who we are. Discomfort and negative emotions are part of the human experience. Shadow work helps us understand why we repress these emotions and teaches us healthier ways to manage them. Shadow work can feel intimidating, but it's simply about understanding yourself better. Here's a breakdown of the three core steps with more details and examples to make it easier to grasp. 1. Catch yourself when you freak out. Identify your triggers. We all have those moments where we get unexpectedly flustered, frustrated, or emotional. These intense reactions are often clues to something deeper going on within us. Pay attention to your buttons. What situations or people consistently make you feel super mad, sad, jealous, anxious, or ashamed? These are your emotional triggers, and they can point towards hidden aspects of your shadow. Examples Maybe you get unreasonably angry when someone criticizes your work. This could be a sign that you have a deep need for validation or a fear of failure lurking beneath the surface. Perhaps you feel intense jealousy when a friend gets a promotion. This might reveal a shadow aspect of insecurity or a hidden desire for similar success. 2. Dig a little deeper. Uncover the roots of your shadow. Once you've identified your triggers, it's time to do some detective work. Ask yourself why these particular situations or people bother you so much. Childhood connections. Did someone make fun of you for something similar as a kid? Maybe your parents had high expectations that made you feel like you weren't good enough. Our shadows often hold onto these old hurts and insecurities. Past experiences. Sometimes our triggers are linked to past experiences. 
Perhaps a public speaking mishap in school still makes you anxious about presentations. Journaling prompts. To get you started, try journaling prompts like, what memories come up when I feel this way? Or, has anyone ever made me feel this way before? 3. Befriend the beast. Integrate your shadow. Your shadow in some evil monster to be banished. It's a part of you, and understanding it can be incredibly empowering. Accept. Don't suppress. Instead of fighting your shadow traits, try to accept them as part of your whole self. Find the good in the shadow. Maybe your anger is a sign that you have a strong sense of justice and a passion for what's right. Perhaps your jealousy means you deeply value success and are driven to achieve your goals. Healthy expression. The key is to find healthy ways to express these shadow traits. Maybe you channel your anger into productive activism or use your competitive spirit to excel in your career. Remember, shadow work is a journey of self-discovery, not a race to perfection. Be patient with yourself and celebrate the progress you make along the way. Self-love. We all have that voice in our head, the one that whispers doubts and puts us down. This is your inner critic, and it's not always helpful. Self-love is about recognizing that voice and learning to talk back to it with kindness. Catch yourself in the act. How does your inner critic sound? Does it call you names or tell you you're not good enough? Once you identify these phrases, you can start to challenge them. Identify the source. Did someone in your past say these things to you? Sometimes our inner critic echoes voices from our childhood or past experiences. Realizing this can help you detach from the negativity. Talk back with kindness. Instead of letting the inner critic win, answer back with a voice of compassion. Tell yourself things you would say to a friend in the same situation. For example, if your inner critic says, I can't do this, you can counter with, this is challenging, but I'm capable of learning and growing. I've overcome obstacles before, and I can do it again. Remember, self-love isn't about becoming perfect. It's about accepting yourself, flaws and all. It's about treating yourself with the same kindness and respect you would show someone you care about. Subscribe and hot the bell button for more.